Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 25. Let's take the hybridization of elements involving d orbitals. So if you see the third period elements for which the shape was, uh, we are not able to find the shape using Vesper theory. Now with this theory, we can easily find the shapes and this third period elements contains d orbitals. That was the reason why we could not uh, actually predict the shape using Vesper theory because the octet tool failed there, right? So the third period it has d orbitals also and we know that the 3 orbitals energy is comparable to 3s and 3p and that's what we need. We need orbitals with comparable energies for hybridization, right? And also we know that the 3d orbitals energy is also comparable to my 4s and 4p. So I have my 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p. All the energies are comparable. So therefore 3s, 3p, 3d, this is one set, or 3d, 4s, p is possible. I mean there are two, two sets of hybridization possible, either in 3s, 3p, 3d, involving, I mean, hybridization involving 3s, 3p, 3d orbitals, or 3d, 4s, 4p orbitals, and that is possible, right? But if you see, there is a significant difference in energies in 3s and 3p and 4s. There is a difference, huge difference. Therefore, if you see 3p, 3d, 4s, this set is not possible. This is not possible. This set and this set is possible. Correct. So we have some hybridization which involves uh, d orbital will not take much, uh, will not go detail into this. We will take some of them. dsp2 hybridization, they are square planar. An example are this one, NiCN4 and PdCl4. sp3 hybridization is triangular bipyramidal. PF pi and PCL5 will take one of these examples. DSP3 is square pyramidal. BRF5 and XUF4 is example. SP3D2 also will take one example. That is example is SF6 sulfur pentafluoride I think or sulfur hexachloride. And this is D2SP3 is also octahedral. This is some of the Hybridization involving d orbital we will not study detail of these. Let's take sp3d hybridization. So we have PCl5 for phosphorus. We have uh, my electronic configuration is Ne3s2 3p3. Right. This is my electronic configuration of phosphorus. Let's draw this uh, 3s2 for the outermost shell only. I'll take care. 3s2 and 3p3, so s has two uh, electrons and p has one electron each. Please note the d orbitals are also there in this case, so we have drawn the d orbitals also in this case. So let's draw this uh, shape of phosphorus. I have in 3s, I have two electrons. I'm drawing only uh, the outermost shells just for simplicity. And then I have three p orbitals containing one electron each. So now what will happen is one electron will go from uh, 3s to 3d, see 3s to 3d and now they will form sp3 hybridization. Please note sp3 hybridization, five orbitals are involved, so they will form sp3 hybridals, hybridals uh, sp3 orbitals like this, sp3 hybrid orbitals like this. In shape, if you want to see how it works, there is something like this. All these orbitals are similar in shape, this has to be same, uh, similar in shape, some issue in the drawing. but all are same and all have one electron each. So all are sp3d. All are sp3d. All are sp3, sp3 orbitals. Now in this case, we can add one chlorine. Chlorine means something like this. One chlorine. Here also we can add some chlorine here. Chlorine we can add something like this. Right? And this chlorine will have one electron and since my sp3 hybrid also has one electron so they are unpaired electron and they'll pair and form the bond it will become pcl5 it will be something like this pcl5 and the shape will be trigonal by pyramid so if you see 
this shape was not explained by Vesper theory, but using the valence bond theory, we can pretty uh, we can easily explain the structure of PCL5. Correct. This is how PCL5 works. Let's take the example of sp3 d2 hybridization. So we'll take uh, SF6. Sulfur has the electronic configuration of neon 3s2 3p4. So let's draw this. So I have a 3s2 and 3p4. So I have in s2 electrons and in p we have four electrons. Now what will happen is this is my sulfur. I've just drawn the outermost electrons, outermost shells. So this is s cells, 3s cell will have two electrons and this is 3p, 3p and 3p, one of the 3p has two electrons, another has one electron each. Now one electron will move from s to p and one will move from p to p. See once again I'll do this electron and this electron both will move to d. You see it moves to d, this guy also moves from here to d and they will form sp3 d2 hybrid orbitals. So since there are six orbitals involved, so we'll get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hybrid orbitals. It will be something like this. And each of these are equal in energy and have same shape. And each of these has one electron. If you see, all have one electron. So these are our sp3 d2. All are sp3 d2. All are sp3 d2 hybrid orbitals. Now in this case, if you see, fluorine, uh, fluorine, uh, elect fluorine, uh, uh, orbitals can form a bond. For example, here also if you see, I'll have one fluorine, I'll have one fluorine. So all this fluorine can form a bond with this. Since the fluorine uh, will have an unpaired electron, they'll form a bond, right? And thus, if you see, the structure is this. The structure is octahedral. So we can explain this using. Valence bent theory. The structure of uh, SF6 can be explained using valence bent theory. It goes through sp3d2 hybridization. Right? This is the shape, three dimensional shape. So, using Vesper theory, also we got the same shape. I'm sorry, in the last uh, video, I told in uh, using Vesper, we could not find the shape of PCL5 that was wrong. Using Vesper, also, we found the shape of PCL5. But PCL5 and SF6, the Lewis failed their Lewis theory because that was only for the second period uh, elements. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.